All right, we're gonna be doing elbow range of motion testing in this video, and we're gonna start with the active range of motion of the elbow complex. Elbow complex is relatively simpler than the shoulder complex, really. Uh, it only has four motions, so we're gonna follow through that right now. Um, I would like you to uh, mirror my motions, just like before. So please go through an elbow flexion for me, okay? Now, in this position, though, I would like to do a quick correction. This is a very common mistake. Uh, let's try to do it on a neutral elbow, not a supinated elbow, because we don't want to involve other muscles right now, just try to keep it ne neutral. So please make sure your client is doing neutral motions before you add on extra stuff. So let's do one more time, flexion, okay? Now slide your hand towards me, and that will be extension, elbow locking, perfect. Now rest your elbow on the forearm on the table, please. And now we're gonna do supination like this, and then pronation. Now I would like to point out that subconsciously, without even realizing, a lot of people might actually cheat, as I call it, not on purpose, but if they have tight muscle structures and you ask them to accomplish a motion, they might actually do it, but when they're doing supination, they might actually end up doing a shoulder adduction. It's a very common one. When they do this, elbow might tip inside, and when I ask the patient to do pronation, GH might actually go up and accomplish the pronation. So I would definitely like you to focus not just the forearm, but a complex of the whole chain together. Make sure that there are no cheats happening. Okay, so that will basically conclude the elbow testing. And then of course we need to do on a bilateral case, but we're only gonna show with one side. Again, flexion, extension, supination, and pronation are the motions of the elbow complex. All right, we're gonna continue our assessment with uh, passive range of motion of the elbow now. Uh, we will basically do the same motions like we did on the A-ROM. So we have elbow flexion, extension, supination, and pronation. So in this case, of course, as passive range of motion goes, I will be doing the motions instead of the client. So in this case, very quickly, elbow flexion, and that basically will indicate an end feel of tissue approximation. Is very, very common forearm is touching the anterior arm biceps. And then in this case, also elbow extension. Now this one I would be definitely careful because this is a bone and bone and feel. So it would be an abrupt stop. It won't necessarily be a tissue approximation like a soft landing or a tissue stretch like there's some give. There won't be any give on this on normal circumstances. It will be an abrupt stop. So you wanna be careful with the and feel passive or pressure here. As far as the pronation and supination is concerned, Let's follow through the same order that we did on the AROM, and we're gonna do pa um, supination, passive uh, range of motion. So in this case, radius is the one doing the pronation and supination, the rotation, okay? So that's why there's no point of holding the entire forearm and turning, then you're missing a lot of information. So make sure to just hold on the radius and rotate the radius into supination, and same thing will happen with the pronation and the end feel for supination and pronation will be under normal circumstances tissue stretch. So again, I, my other hand is on the under the elbow, so that gives me a little bit of a palpation um, opportunity. And then moving to supination, and then switch quickly, same with the radius holding again, and the elbow, and doing a pronation and end feel one more time. Again, tissue stretch is normal. And that would conclude the passive range of motion of the elbow. It's very quick, just like the AROM, four motions, flexion, extension, supination, and pronation. And we will proceed to the other side, just like we did before, bilaterally. And that will conclude the passive range of motion of the elbow complex. All right, we will continue with our resistant range of motion for the elbow complex. Now in this case though, we will add on two particular motions. And the reason we are adding them is because of the muscle involvement of all the elbow complex. A lot of the wrist motion that flexors and extensors, they come from the elbow complex, basically medial and lateral epicondyles of the humerus. So the elbow complex right here and inside here. So that's why for resistant range of motion that we test muscle structures, we definitely want to involve at least, I mean, you can involve more actions, but at least you want to involve wrist extension and wrist flexion. And I prefer to start with those 
so I can continue with the logical progression of elbow and finish with elbow. So in this case, open pack position of the wrist is basically like this neutral. It has a slight ulnar deviation, but with the gravity in play, we don't really need to care that much because it literally says on the book, by the book speaking, slight ulnar deviation. So you don't really need to worry about that. What we need to worry about is where we are pushing. Wrist flexion and extension, you should stay basically on the metacarpals. I wouldn't necessarily go to the digits. So in this case, I'm going to make sure that my hand is somewhat stabilizing and palpating the wrist. And I will help tell my client to don't let me move you. And I'm going to push from here. As you remember, I like to tap twice to make sure that we have a common understanding on where I'm pushing. So relax for a second. Okay, and hold, don't let me move you. And five, four, three, two, one. That was wrist extension. And we're going to go from the inside here now. Five, four. Three, two, one. One more time just for clarification. Power is coming through here, not for much for the digits. I'm checking for the wrist flexion, not so much the digits flexion. Okay, so now the wrist is done. Open pack position of the elbow roughly around here. It's roughly around 70 degrees of flexion and a slight supination about 10 degrees. But again, because 10 degrees is such a small number, I wouldn't really worry about it. My focus is 70 degrees of flexion of the elbow, not so much 90 degrees right here. So I would like you to hold right here. I'm going to push down again, not to hand the uh, forearm right here, elbow. And don't move your hold. Five, four, three, two, one. And I'm going to do a quick correction right here. Perfect. And hold. I'm going to push up. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent without moving so much. Now if I try to pull the client into supination and I ask her to hold, then I will check for pronation. But I'm gonna try to stick with the order that we started with A-ROM and P-ROM. So I need to switch and make sure that I try to put the client into pronation. That means that she has to activate her supinator muscles. So in this case, okay, don't move me. I'm gonna go this way and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Again, as you remember from passive range of motion, my focus is on radius, not the entire wrist. And then we'll finish the exam with pronation. So I'm trying to pull the client into supination and hold, don't let me move you. Five, four, three, two, one. And that's, we'll basically conclude the resistant range of motion of the elbow. Again, flexion and extension of the wrist should be involved. So A ROM four motions, P ROM four motions, but R ROM, this range of motion is actually minimum six motions. Okay, and then again, we are going to compare it bilaterally. And then we'll complete the wrist and range of motion of the testing of elbow complex.